This episode of looking at picture books is a little bit different from usual. It's all about what happens if you decide not to go down the traditional publishing route, but to do it yourself. I'm going to be speaking to two people who set up their own publishing company. This is their third book, We Are Family. And Lucy Reynolds and Jenna Herman have done everything themselves. They've written, illustrated, designed, sourced the printing, done the marketing, done the sales, done the PR, and they have done an amazing job. I've watched in awe from the sidelines and I thought it'd be fascinating to ask them a little bit about their journey and how they did it. And I think you're going to enjoy hearing what they've got to say. Let's start with a detailed look at this book, which is really professionally produced. The book is all about the many, many different types of family. And it's got a simple rhyming text, but it is also packed with information about natural history. So it works on two levels at the same time. So we start off with your family may be big or small. And mixed in with that, you've also got information about blue whales and rabbits. The artwork is beautiful with lots and lots of textures built into it. And it goes on through all sorts of different types of families. Nice page here. I didn't know this fascinating fact about black swans. A quarter of male black swans pair with other males, mating with a female simply to fertilise her eggs. Hi Jenna and Lucy, lovely to meet you and thank you so much for joining me today to talk about your amazing book, We Are Family. <laughs> Hi! <Ta -da. laughs> Hello, Hello, thank, thank you me. so much for having us. <laughs> That's my pleasure. So do you want to start by telling me a little bit about how you came up with the idea to set up your own publishing company? Because I think this is your third book, isn't it? Lucy, do you want to start? Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, so Jenna and I have actually been friends for over 20 years. Um, we met at university, I was studying English and Jenna fine art, and we always had this little kind of fantasy of making books together, I suppose, and combining our skills. Um, and it was when Jenna was on her first maternity leave and I was starting to rethink my career. I'd drafted a few children's stories um, and poems and showed them to Jenna. And so we thought we could make a nice book of what we had. And um, to be honest, we weren't quite sure where to go from there. <laughs> so we looked at the various options and the feeling we got was one of being a bit overwhelmed when we thought about trying to submit it to publishers or trying to find an agent because everything we read seemed to suggest that that would take forever and re revolve around a theme of rejection and, and, you know, submitting it endlessly and not hearing back or being rejected. I think we sent a really draft, draft version to one publisher. Perhaps. Yeah, I think maybe, but, yeah, one or two. Um, but actually the drafts that we sent they were nothing like the book that we printed. <laughs> so, and we were very unsure as to what level of book to submit. Do we submit a whole book? Do we submit just, you know, a draft? Um, we were just finding our feet at that stage, weren't we? Yeah, so I think we thought, well, why don't we just try and let's see if we can do it ourselves really. And so without really intending to set up a publishing business, we did. <laughs> <laughs> And it was quite organic. So we, you know, we worked out what would be required to create a book together and to get it to the shelves. And step by step, the business evolved. And um, it, it was quite, it was quite an organic journey, but I think it's one that suited our partnership very well. So 
So do you want to talk us through what those steps actually were? And also it'd be really interesting to hear a little bit about how you separate out the business side of it from the creative side, because doing both at once is really a massive challenge that I can't imagine even starting to do. So Lucy, do you want to tell us, tell us the secrets? <laughs> yeah, so I think step by step, there are lots of factors to consider. Because uh, we do, we divide our roles quite nicely. And I, I guess the first thing I'd say would be that this has been such a partnership. And I think both of us would say we probably couldn't do it ourselves. We probably couldn't have done it individually. So the steps, um, if we break them down, so book creation. So um, we were really lucky to have input from um, people in the industry as we were creating the book. So we had our story, uh, we did invest in a professional editor to make sure that the text was really tight. Um, then Jenna turns that into a storyboard and I was very much involved in that process. I think, again, I'd say we were both involved in the writing and the illustration process so that our books feel quite jointly created. Um, then it's a case of fine tuning the illustrations to create a finished looking book template or book sort of draft. And at that point, it really the unknown bit began because then we were faced with things like paperweight and binding options. And we tried glue bound because it was cheaper, but the pages found, fell out. So we had to go for thread bound. And then we're talking about things like, you know, the lamination on the cover and the dimensions of the book and all the things that make it look professional on a bookshelf rather than looking like a homemade, you know, self-published book which it is, but we didn't want to look like it. So yeah. we, did, we did a lot of research around the look and the feel of it. Uh, we then had to find a publisher who could print to our environmental standards and within our cost you know, bracket. We had to work out margins and look at what we would be producing the book for and selling it for and factor in the cut that bookshops would take and distribution costs. And we were so naive at the beginning, we didn't know that bookshops order in quantities of one or five or, you know, we were, all our calculations were out, but we had a go. We took it out into schools initially to do a trial run. So we got loads of feedback from teachers and children before we even printed it. Uh, we tweaked it based on that and we got lots of nice reviews which we put in our marketing pot. We had to think about our marketing plan, so press releases, website, building it, writing the content, designing the look, social media, bookshop visits, festivals, all that marketing pot was a huge amount of resource um, and sort of we just pooled our thoughts on that and brainstormed. And then we had to think through and get to know the distribution and the actual book sales industry, which again, we <laughs> didn't know anything about. So the way we did that was um, with my other hat on, I do, I'm a project manager for the Hern Hill Forum. So I had some links to local bookshops through that and Jenna had links to her local community of bookshops. So we did a lot of legwork. Once we had our printed copy in our hands, taking it into bookshops to try to get orders which we processed ourselves packaged ourselves and often delivered ourselves and then once we built a track record of bookshop sales we went to Bertram's which was one of the main book distributors who then started to order in higher quantities once we had that track record we approached gardeners who stocked to Waterstones and then there was a sudden jump up um, so we sort of built up our sales that way so individual bookshops then Bertram's and gardeners but then in line with that we're then having to do invoicing and inventory management and quality control and you know endless trips to the post office. It definitely was a case of learning on the job because when we started out we had this vision that perhaps we could do what the record industry is doing. There are independent musicians out there and bands who 15 years ago had started making their own way without a huge label. They just did it by getting out there and marketing themselves on YouTube and starting their own label. So why couldn't we? Um, yes, Lucy said it. We were quite naive because we weren't a part of the children's book publishing industry. There was so much to learn. If we looked at those spreadsheets we'd created right there at the beginning now they wouldn't really make much sense <laughs> because um we hadn't factored in so much we hadn't factored in things like um 
distribution and distribution costs. I mean, even the tiniest things like um, oh, envelopes, you know, at back then envelopes was a really big deal because we were actually posting out all of our books ourselves and that's how we were gaining momentum by doing it all ourselves and then as things progressed and we moved into distribution and into Woodstones and um, the the business model became more complicated and um, yeah it just evolved and through each stage of, stage of the process, we had to just put a different hat on, didn't we? We, we progressed from writer illustrator into designer and production manager, then on into sales and PR, where we were literally going around to bookshops with our book in our hands. And I'm, I, I mean, I'm not sure if I'd recommend doing this because I'm sure bookshops probably find this really annoying, but we would go in and ask to speak to the manager and say, what do you think of our book? Um, but another important thing to stress is that our book had, um, a lot had gone into the production of it. I think because of um, my background in magazine publishing, I felt very passionate about the fact this needed to be done properly and it needed to look like it can comp compete with other books on the shelf. It can't just fall apart in someone's hands and last a few weeks. It needs to be really, really solid and professional. Um, and so I think that really helped with getting into bookshops because it wasn't just about the story and the illustrations. It is about does this feel like value, you know, like a good value product. I think just to add to that as well, the sort of ethos we took. So our books are lovely books for little explorers and they're nature themed. And we both have a very strong um, concern for conservation and the environment and so from the that was woven in and our paper is FSD and our ink stock was sort of sustain, sustainable and when it then came to being stopped by people like Kew Gardens where they have very rigorous production standards um, on environmental factors that really stood us in good stead as well because it meant that doors weren't closed to us we you know we were printed in the UK and um, sustainably produced I, I was and, just going to ask actually a little bit more about because you mentioned about sourcing the printer who met these um, criteria. How how did you go about finding the right printer? Well, the um, I again I think a lot of this comes down to us working as a partnership um, between us. I think we've been able to share various contacts in the print in case in the case of printing I had a few contacts from my magazine experience and we kind of worked from there in the end we found um, a company that were based in the UK and probably the only people we could find who could print to our standard in colour for our budget in the UK um, the only thing is it was just it is really expensive um, printing um, to a, th this this kind of quantity in the UK. So we we eventually, after a few print runs in the UK, um, moved things to a printer over in Poland, who have worked with some incredible publishers. They um, have done some amazing books that we admire in the bookshops. And I think we were able to do that because of um, Bounce, because by this point we'd been signed by Bounce Sales and Marketing and they had been a huge help getting us to work out these kinds of practicalities because we needed to print more and uh, the numbers had to add up. So I just wanted to ask a little bit more about the relationship with Bounce and how you mentioned being selected by them. How does that process work and what have they done with you? What's it, what's it been like working with them? So Bounce have been phenomenal. They, have, uh, they represent a large number of independent children's publishers. So they are specialists in representing children's publishers to the bookshop trade. And they have the largest um, team of um, sales reps uh, specifically for children's books in the UK. So we were so excited about the possibility of working with them. 
it happened when we had got a couple of years in or two or three years in I think and so we had a really good level of sales kind of history behind us with parrots and then our second book hedgehogs don't live in the city so in terms of how bounce works and the relationship with them so yeah we were sort of recommended to them which then led to us setting up an initial sort of scoping meeting really where we took in copies of our book and our sales figures um, and feedback and photos and all the sort of press releases and PR stuff we'd been putting out there and gathering. We were looking and they were looking for whether there was a fit really between what we were doing in their portfolio and there was and it, it seemed quite um, positive from the start. Um, so we then sort of pursued the conversation with them and it led to a contract so they so whereas previously we were selling our books in bulk to say gardeners who then distribute them to bookshop trade now our books are stocked in uh, bounce's warehouse and bounce manage all of the orders that go out to bookshops and also schools through peters and so jenna and i still sell some books directly through our website but most of the book sales are now handed by handled by bounce and they've just been amazing that you know they represent us at the london book fair and at bologna they have featured us in their you know book of the month catalog they have helped to plug us into the more mainstream book sales channels i suppose and they have this marketing force so we still do all of our own legwork and work hard on the PR and marketing front, but we now have access to all these channels that Bounce, as a very well-regarded and very well-established figure in the industry, hold. Amazing. And um, Jenna mentioned earlier that you hired a PR person. So do you want to talk a little bit about how, how that works? Because you've had so many amazing reviews in, you know, national newspapers, all sorts of things. It's really impressive. So it'd be fascinating to hear about how all that came about. So we, yeah, I'm so pleased that you've seen the book crop up um, in places that aren't just our Instagram and social media accounts. Um, this is all down to an amazing um, woman we were recommended to speak to called Antonia. We approached her, explained what we have and who we are, and were interested to know if she could help us um, get to places we haven't been able to reach before. We explained we've got a very small budget, but what could we achieve with this very small budget? And she was amazing. She said, well, you know, I would probably be able to send copies or at least recommend that we send copies to these people and it did feel like we weren't being promised good reviews all we were doing was utilizing Antonia's amazing contacts to get the book onto their desks and hope that um, they like the book um, but it was amazing because um, a lot of people did like the book and we just sat and waited for um yeah to see if anyone liked it and fancied writing about it Amazing. and um yeah her contacts included online book bloggers and also press the press association and large newspapers so we were just absolutely delighted but it's important to say that um before meeting antonia we had done all of our previous um publicity ourselves um so for hedgehogs and um, for parrots and hedgehogs we were just doing everything on um, social media plugging away contacting book reviewers and offering to send them a copy ourselves um, and it was brilliant because so much momentum was gained um, online and through the Instagram community it was amazing uh, but the thing that Antonia did was just help us um, reach another audience yeah, it's been it's really invaluable I, I can't believe how hard you've worked on this <laughs> really really impressive and such a uh, thank you a great example too I mean what would you say to somebody who is at this very moment watching this video and thinking I'd really like to try doing this myself what would be your top tip 
brace yourself. <laughs> I think, no, I think, I mean, I don't in general view degree, but I would say go for it, but don't underestimate the amount of work it will require. And, you know, a lot of this, for Jenna and I, a lot of it's been done breastfeeding night shifts or <laughs> in between house moves or, you know, we've, we've, we have had to snatch time. We've both got tiny kids and other work commitments. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been a lot of work that we've squeezed in, but I think we both feel really proud of it. And I think you can do it. And, you know, I feel like if we had tried to go down the traditional publishing route of submitting manuscripts and waiting, we might still be waiting. <laughs> and yeah. we've actually just thought, let's give it a go. Yeah. And it can be done. And I feel like there might be more of a shift towards this, you know, I was this just going to say, I think that is beginning to happen. And I think a lot more people will do this yeah. in the future so you're really leading the way I'd also think it's really important to stress that Lucy and I did it together as a partnership and I don't think either one of us would have been able to do this by ourselves I think also it's been really helpful in terms of our confidence just to egg each other on be critical with each other so and and help make our work better um, there are so many reasons by working together as a pair has been invaluable. I think I would have given up quite early on in the process, probably. I would have lost confidence and felt overwhelmed. Uh, and I think it is, it's such a kind of complicated sector to break into. And there is such a high level of competition out there that you do need to feel quite sure about your USP and you know what your book is representative of and quite um yeah able to pick yourself up and keep going when it sometimes feels like you can't work out how to get in there <laughs> it's so important to be resilient whether you're doing it your way or you're doing it the traditional way resilience is kind of 50 percent of it at least i would say yeah. could you see yourselves in the future growing doodles and scribbles into a bigger publishing company that might take on other people's books we do get approached fairly regularly and at the moment we just don't have enough hours in the day but I think for both of us that would be a really exciting possibility I think it's one we'd love to pursue and explore we've had some really interesting manuscripts and um, approaches coming back to your question about how we manage creativity versus the business at the moment we are managing to release a book once every what, what would you say is the average two years, two years. <laughs> so we're not like a big publisher putting out a book every season we have taken the decision to spend our energy making sure our product is perfect and then applying our energy to the business side of things and that's how it's gone at the moment we would struggle to blend both of those um, things at the same time and I think it's only when our kids are a bit older and we're working more full-time on this um, business that we'll consider expanding like that. Oh, one thing I've I would like to ask you about, but I don't know how comfortable you're talking about it. Is the, mon the money side of it, is it p paying its way? <laughs> I think what the margins on books are small and where we find it does pay its way is festivals and school visits. And, you know, you can have a really successful school visit where you'll receive a good fee and sell 90 books in a day or whatever, you know, like a sudden good chunk of book sales. You know, it's starting now to piece together to look quite viable whereas to start with it was you know it was quite thin <laughs> and the <laughs> margins on books are quite tight um so I think it's kind of building in those layers um you know the book sales is a good steady income and then supplementing that with festivals and schools and you know project we've been commissioned by Great Ormond Street Hospital for instance to do a nice design and writing piece which Ooh. fits with our books and Excellent. it builds out from there or you know we I helped to run the Hernhill Kids Lit Fest and that's uh, kind of, and Jenna's been helping as well. And that's complimentary. It feeds into the books, but it's project management that brings, you know, so it's kind of a jigsaw at the moment, but it is starting to look quite viable, I'd say. Excellent. <laughs> that's really, really good to hear. And I know you have been doing lots and lots of school visits. How, how have you gone about contacting the schools and setting those up? It's probably been led by our social media. 
Lucy looks after Twitter, I look after Instagram. And on Instagram, um, at the moment, I'm really trying to share as much about schools as possible because we've got such an amazing educational package. And we've had some incredible feedback from our activity days that we've done in school so far. So that's basically what I'm doing on Instagram is pushing what we've done, try to um, get word out that, you know, book is in your school and we can look after your kids for a whole day and they'll learn so much from us and we can tailor experiences for your school. Also just phoning and emailing schools and getting a foot in the door. But I would say that another challenge is the fact that we are um, representing ourselves. So we just have to be ballsy and pick up the phone. Everything you're doing is so impressive. I think 99% of illustrators that I know just wouldn't quite be bold enough to do that so I wish that I didn't have to do that because I'd, I'd love for somebody else to be yeah. phoning up a school we've really only got this far by doing it ourselves yeah. and I guess we just you're, learned you're showing to... what can be done if you're <laughs> yeah, determined to enjoy it Although, and have a good product I, yeah, I think absolutely um, hats off to you both from the schools and festivals type of thing I really really love that side of it I absolutely love being in schools I'd agree there's something like I think particularly with we are family because it's speaking to children on very varied emotional levels like there's there's the conservation theme and interest in animals which the children are engaging with beautifully but then below that the subtext of different family scenarios and dynamics and experiences we're finding they are receiving it really well and connecting with it emotionally in a way that we're both finding very moving <laughs> and so quite often I'm actually getting quite emotional reading this book and I think it for both of us it comes from a very personal place its creation has been a very personal experience and it's layered through with emotion and it's just been amazing seeing children respond to it and connect to their own experiences and take something from it that we hope will give them a sort of that their own sense of inner resilience and validation as they go forward in life. So I've just got one last question for you two, and that is, what do you wish you'd known when you started? I think for me, I don't I think looking back, both of us feel really proud of how we've done it and uh, where we've got to. I think looking back, I'm, I'd wish that I'd had a kind of cheats guide to the book industry. So how are books sold and who, do, you know, we found out about Bertrams and we found out about Gardeners and we found out about Bounce and we found kind of incrementally along the way. But if we had had a rough guide to how the book industry works and the places we needed to send our book or make contact, it would have, made things a lot easier and um, it may not have changed our journey but it may have um, made it feel less like we were quite often up against these confusing brick walls we couldn't quite penetrate um, right. so yes yeah, so like having a map for your journey a map yeah exactly, a map yeah that's a really good idea I think maybe it would have been really interesting to understand the full extent of what this would involve because at the time, when we thought about creating and releasing a children's book, I just imagined that's what it would involve, creating and <laughs> releasing a children's book. I didn't really see beyond that. And in maybe it would have been very daunting knowing all of that information back then. Maybe it would have put us off. But actually, it's just added more and more layers to a very interesting career. So I really am just so impressed by what both of you have done. And it's I think it's going to be really, really interesting and useful for everybody watching who either is thinking about self-publishing or is traditionally published and wants to learn a little bit more about how to get your books out there because you still have to do that even if you're traditionally published. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything else you want to talk about. I think the final thing I'd add would be a sort of sense of hope that there might be a bit of a shift in the industry towards more acceptance 
of books that have been independently published or self-published like there is still a stigma out there you still have to kind of go <laughs> self-published and you can see them going equals rubbish <laughs> but i i hope that you know the more people do it and the more it becomes um you know a more viable mainstream option um the more there will be a sense that you can create your own books and go to market in a way that is of equal value and possibly of some additional value because you have kind of done it yourself um it's sad at the moment you know some of the awards we'd like to enter you're not able to if it's a self-published book it it would be nice if there was a sort of level of playing field we can understand why but it does feel like there is hopefully a shift towards that sense of equalization and i think figureheads like bounce taking a step to represent us as an independent publisher is you know that's quite a big thing for us it it's a badge of kind of industry acceptance in a way and hopefully that will become more and more common um and there will be a sense of yeah self-publishing being you know a respected option a viable well, one. i i think that's the way things are going and i think you two are a really important part of that change and an example of how it can be done in a highly professional and successful way so thank, thank you both you so much. much for talking to me. Thank you so much for thank having you, Jane. Congratulations on the book. Thank, thank you so you. much, Jane. I hope you found Jenna and Lucy as inspiring as I did. It's really impressive what they've done and so professional. So it was really good to hear all their tips and insider secrets. Do stay tuned for looking at picture books. I've got lots of exciting guests lined up. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. There's a button to click for that below and it's free. And I'll see you next time on Looking at Picture Books.